Stanford Human Biology Class of 2021. Welcome. Welcome to you, to your family members and friends, to our faculty and staff and the larger HUM Bio community watching here with us today. It's a big day. As being director of the program in human biology, it is my pleasure to open this event today in celebration of our extraordinary graduating seniors. Now, it's a little hard to get one's head around the last year and a half. The global pandemic has caused unimaginable human loss and suffering. At the local level, at Stanford, you, our students, had to leave campus in a rush, finishing out some of your junior year and most of your senior year at a distance under unquestionably challenging circumstances. On top of the pandemic, our nation has been grappling anew with racism and violence against people of color, as well as the heightened political tensions surrounding the 2020 elections. These times we've been through have been a call for committed, justice-seeking, and community-focused individuals to step up. And you, our exemplary graduating seniors, have done exactly that. From caregiving for your family members, volunteering your time to help others in your community, doing research to forward science and medicine, and marching alongside your friends, colleagues, and family members. You, our HomeBio students, have been incredible. We have watched as you have risen with grace and determination to face every single challenge thrown your way. You have done all these things all while simultaneously accomplishing this really impressive achievement of earning your Stanford degree. Let's just focus on that last point. Earning your Stanford degree. Wow. You know, so rarely in life do we take the time to appreciate these really important junctures. So now, while you're watching, I'd like each of you to take a moment and look back and recognize all of the effort all through your life that you've put in to get to this particular graduation weekend. We, your teachers, family members, and friends are all incredibly proud of you. Now, Moving on with the ceremony. Next, I'll be handing it over to our five fantastic student speakers for this afternoon's celebration. Noah Magbual, Isabella Duan, Julian Aguilar, Justine Caneda, and Salvador Teo. In interspersed with the speeches, you will see some terrific student musical pieces. Noah, take it away. If you told me three years ago that I'd be speaking at graduation, I would have thought you were joking. But then again, if you told me your graduation was going to be on Zoom after a year of staying indoors amidst the global pandemic, I also would have thought you were joking. This virtual ceremony is nowhere near what we had in mind for our last hurrah. And I don't know about all of you, but as I share these words, I feel as though my heart is in a million different places. It aches for the many lives lost and disrupted, the civil and social unrest that continues to persist, and the lack of closure I feel for our last year together. To say this year was tough and emotionally arduous would be an understatement of the gravity of the circumstances. But the reason I stand here today, or sit virtually, is because of the pride I feel in this community and the resilience and love it has instilled in me. I may not have senior nights or a dinner on the quad to look back on after leaving campus, but what I have are vivid memories of telling myself I would go to 9 a.m. core lecture every day, only to watch the lectures in the comfort of my bed five weeks later. But I guess that was good practice for this year. I have memories of Dr. Mike Frank showing us adorable videos of his kids, 
The sweet sense of relief I felt after finally declaring week nine of spring quarter and the excitement I felt for pursuing a major that would let me explore what it means to be an active contributor to this world in a way that was meaningful to me. I see parallels of that excitement as a current student advisor, now helping sophomores who are also frantically struggling to find the difference between breadth and depth while discovering their newfound passions within the major. But mostly, being in the Humbayo Corps for four days a week for 30 weeks has given me some of the most kind, intelligent, and supportive friends who have defined both my Humbayo and Stanford experiences. We may be reluctant to step into the next chapter, especially when it feels like the current page we're on didn't have the end we were hoping for. But I am more than confident in the memories, lessons, and community that Humbayo has cultivated to usher us into a post-pandemic world that we can change for the better. Today is a celebration for exactly that. And so I hope you feel pride in your accomplishments and the community that has guided us and that will continue to care for us as we leave Stanford. Thank you for listening and congratulations to the Human Biology Class of 2021. sophomore year, like most of you, I enrolled in the Corps. At the same time, I was taking lots of chem, GEs, and going to practice 20 hours a week. Moving through these daily actions, something felt off. I felt passive, like my life was being dictated by someone else. This was because I was so scared of making the wrong decision and feeling regret about that, that it was easier to just not make any decision at all and just do as I was told. For two years, I did this, and I knew that I just needed to step out of my comfort zone at some point into a zone that some will call the flow state or flow zone. Not to be confused with Frozone from The Incredibles, the flow zone is the zone of discomfort where challenge meets ability. So at the end of sophomore year, I knew that choosing concentration would be the first major opportunity to practice discomfort. I was initially held back by my previous fears. There were so many courses and this was so binding. But talking to faculty and friends encouraged me to think critically about what I really wanted. And I know this sounds silly, but officially declaring was truly a moment of great pride for my growth. With that under my belt, I met my second Humbio challenge a little less than a year later as I thought about writing an honors thesis. Again, I felt daunted by the choices and the challenge, but I was armed by my growing confidence in being an active agent in my own education. I took a leap of faith, applied, and wrote the thesis. And from there, because of my time in a lab that focuses on language, and because I'd practiced making a center choice in the face of a hard decision, I decided to take on a second major in linguistics. So it's been in this way that Humbio structure was a stepping stone to my thesis, which was in turn a stepping stone to other academic pursuits. Humbio slowly and patiently guided me to make ambitious decisions that have brought me here today. And thinking back, I know that I'm not alone in thinking that college has been so hard. And so I now invite you all to think about these last four years through the lens of your Humbio degree, how Humbio challenged, yet encouraged, and supported you to explore, 
reach for more, and finally be where you are today. Hi everyone, I'm Julian, and my concentration in HumBio is in immunological determinants of health in marginalized communities. I can only say so much in a limited amount of time, but I just wanted to express my thoughts about and gratitude for the human biology program here at Stanford. After trying to convince myself freshman year that I was different than all these other HumBio pre-meds out here, bouncing back and forth between English, philosophy, symbolic systems, and bioengineering majors, I realized I needed to stop lying to myself and came back home to HumBio. No other major felt quite as homey to me as, as HumBio did, and the supportive community I found here was a key component for me sticking with the major. Even though sophomore year was a rough year for me academically, I still felt like the CAs, the SAs, the professors, the staff, and my peers genuinely wanted me to succeed. I'm especially grateful to those who recognized, understood, and accommodated the many barriers to success that I faced throughout my undergraduate career. And I'm also grateful for those whom I overcame those barriers with. I also felt that the HumBio program was most closely aligned with an intersectional perspective on health and well being that I couldn't quite find in other majors. Throughout my studies, I learned about key frameworks and ways of thinking that integrate various aspects and determinants of health to develop equitable solutions. At the same time, I also learned to be critical of many existing frameworks, particularly those that don't center the needs of marginalized communities, that don't affirm and reinforce their agency, and that don't empower members of the community. These experiences pushed me to be unwavering in the vision of liberation, abolition, and indigenous land sovereignty set forth by those who have come long before us. Additionally, I and many of my peers have been inspired to carry forward these key lessons in our work as future physicians in order to bring about equitable health outcomes for patients and learning not only how to treat the body, but the mind and the spirit as well. With these ideals in mind and with the valuable experiences I've had as a HumBio major, I hope to pay forward the privilege afforded to me as a Stanford HumBio graduate in service to marginalized communities like mine as a future patient advocate. I also look forward to partnering with and joining in on many of the initiatives and endeavor, endeavors that I know many of my peers right here in HumBio will be spearheading to promote health and well-being among historically disenfranchised populations. So with that said, I'm extremely grateful for the opportunities I've been given through HumBio. So I just wanted to give a huge thank you to everyone involved with the program for making all of this possible and for believing in me and my goals and my aspirations. And also shout out to my fly first generation low income family in HumBio that have kept me sane throughout my time in the major and a huge reason why I'm still here today. So thank you everybody. And I'm wishing everyone here many blessings as we all go on to pursue what we were meant to do. Yeah.
What does it mean to be human? A seemingly common yet complex question posed to us in our first quarter of the Hanbio Core in our introduction into the incredible world of human biology. I remember thinking about this question with my classmates and appreciating how each student brought their own unique perspective that contributed to our ever-growing collective answer. The question, what does it mean to be human, transformed itself before our eyes into the being of various ideas and identities, integrating each student's unique experiences and histories. When I first came to Stanford, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to pursue, but I knew that I was interested in learning more about human nature. Naturally, I gravitated towards the human biology major, where I was introduced to the exciting world of interdisciplinary studies that integrated my many passions and interests. As a lifelong performing artist, I was particularly interested in studying the intersection of the arts and sciences and discovering how my study of human beings and how they interact in the world is able to enhance my growth and knowledge as an artist. Every single individual that I've had the privilege to meet in this major offers the world a variety of passions that transcend any single discipline, from research and athletics to social justice advocacy and the performing arts. When I think back to the question of what makes us human, I find the answer lies in the example set forth by our community, transforming every space we inhabit through our integrated passions and diverse identities. Reflecting on my journey in human biology, I am so incredibly grateful for the dedication, thoughtfulness, and most importantly, compassion that has been nurtured into my experiences through this department. And I wanted to express my immense gratitude for my peers and everyone in the human biology department that has made these last four years so memorable. I know that each and every one of you will go forth to not only flourish in your own lives, but also impact your communities as the kind, caring, and compassionate human beings that you all are. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Salvador Tello. Today, I am graduating with a degree in human biology with a concentration in the environmental and genetic determinants of health. My hometown is Patterson, California, a small town in California's San Joaquin Valley, and I am the first in my family to graduate from college. From the moment I began my journey at Stanford, I was determined to develop the tools needed to address the health disparities present within rural communities, the end goal being to make a difference in the lives of families like mine. I found human biology to be the perfect program to fulfill my goals and motivations. As I worked towards fulfilling my degree, I was happy to encounter an academically enriching experience that invited every student to share their insights and lived experience. I learned from classmates who grew up caring for loved ones, classmates who like me were the first in their families to attend college, classmates who immigrated from other countries. My classmates' lived experience grounded the knowledge I learned in the classroom to the real world and reiterated to me that the skills I was learning would let me make a positive impact in my community back home. While most Stanford students have a vision for a better future, Humbio is unique in that it gave us as students the autonomy to craft a degree program that resonates with us. We came in as students passionate to make a difference, and Humbio provided us with the opportunity to engage with coursework, colleagues, and mentors eager to help us define how we can materialize our visions into action. Whether that be making healthcare more accessible in rural settings, drafting policy that will make healthcare more affordable, working towards finding a cure for afflictions like cancer, or any other goal, I have high hopes that every colleague of mine graduating with me here today will go on to make impactful, tangible, and equitable change. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2021. When life leaves you high and dry, I'll be at your door tonight. If you need help, if you need help, I'll shut down the city lights. I'll lie, cheat, I'll beg and bribe to make you well, to make you well. When enemies are at your door, I'll carry you away from more. If you need help, if you need help. Your hope dangling by a string I'll share in your suffering To make you well To make you well Give me reasons to believe That you would do the same for me 
And I will do it for you You're gone, gone, gone When you fall like a statue I'm gonna be there to catch you Put you on your feet You on your feet And if your well is empty Not a thing will prevent me Tell me what you need What do you need I surrender honestly You're gone, gone, gone You're my backbone You're my cornerstone You're my crutch when my legs stop moving You're my head start You're my rugged heart You're the pulse that I've always needed Like a drum, baby, don't stop beating Like a drum, baby, don't stop beating Like a drum, baby, don't stop beating a drum, my heart never stops beating for you.
Because what you got is It is a real pleasure to introduce this year's faculty farewell speaker, Will Talbot. He's Professor of Developmental Biology and a Catherine R. Kennedy and Daniel L. Grossman Fellow in Human Biology. And he is most likely the reason you can still explain Okazaki fragments to your friends and family. You all know Professor Talbot from the core, where you undoubtedly appreciated his clear and logical distillation of the many complex multi-step processes that cells use to keep themselves and us running. And speaking of running, you may not know that Will is probably the fastest runner of all the core faculty, which might surprise you as he's well known for his reassuringly relaxed cadence which is just one quality that makes him an extremely effective teacher. Professor Talbot is also a very dedicated educator, and I speak for all of us who teach in the core when I say that Will is an absolutely terrific colleague who's always working to make the core the best it can be. Here he is to share yet more insights with you, Professor Will Talbot. Hello, graduates of the Human Biology class of 2021, family members, and friends. I want to offer my sincere congratulations to our graduates, and I want to thank their friends and family for all of the support that they have given our students during their time at Stanford. I've been teaching in the HumBio Corps for 16 years, and I've loved every minute of it, and so I'm particularly honored to speak at this commencement today. Graduates, all of us in the HumBio program are proud of what you have accomplished here, and I hope that you are all proud of your accomplishments, too. We expect the very best of our students, and it can be challenging to be a Stanford undergraduate, even in the best of times. Under the very difficult circumstances of the past year and a half, you have all inspired us with your achievements, you have demonstrated fortitude and perseverance, and you have all made sacrifices. But you have all succeeded, and we are proud of you. To all the parents, family members, and friends, I know that you are proud of our graduates too, and you have every reason to be. Our graduates have completed a rigorous course of study, and they move into the future ready to apply what they have learned. They will become the leaders that tackle the challenges we face, whether it is this pandemic or the next one, the inequalities that exist in healthcare, education, and so many other facets of our society, or sustainability and climate change. If the lessons of the last year have taught us anything, it's that HumBio has become even more important and relevant as a major because it stands at the intersection of the natural and social sciences. HumBio brings together many bright minds from all backgrounds and many fields. Our HumBio graduates are creative, thoughtful students with broad training and the commitment to take on difficult challenges. The pandemic laid bare the magnitude and the complexity of the health and societal problems we face. The solutions to these problems will have many dimensions. It is you, our human biology graduates, who are uniquely suited to face these challenges. Why? Because you have the ability to consider the broader implications of the biomedical sciences. You are the ones who will approach global issues with open analytical minds and also take into account the effects of culture, economics, health disparity, ethics, and public policy. You will step into many diverse roles, including scientists, physicians, educators, public health officials, lawyers, and business leaders. You are exactly the type of leaders who will help us solve the world's most intractable problems. The SARS-CoV-2 virus has proved to be a difficult biological foe, and the pandemic has brought great suffering and hardship. But we are moving past this crisis, 
and this last year has been called the Triumph of Science. As we celebrate your accomplishments, it is appropriate to consider the many professionals who made this triumph possible, because this illustrates what the future holds and the roles that you will assume. Scientists and physicians of all disciplines across academia, the public sector, and the private sector collaborated to respond to the crisis. About four weeks after clinicians recognized that we confronted a deadly new infectious disease, molecular geneticists had analyzed the genome of the virus and developed a diagnostic test. Medical professionals across the globe risked their own health and worked around the clock to heal their patients. Epidemiologists and evolutionary biologists tracked viral variants and predicted the spread of the disease. Public health officials and social scientists identified vulnerable populations and implemented guidelines to slow the spread of the disease. Biochemists and cell biologists elucidated the replication of the virus and searched for drugs to combat it. Researchers collaborated to create multiple effective vaccines, including two based on revolutionary mRNA technology, and they ran clinical trials. Keep in mind that a decade ago, it took 10 to 15 years to produce a vaccine for a new disease. Government policy officials financed the production of billions of doses of vaccines to ensure that they would be available as rapidly as possible. President Biden said that the mobilization to produce and distribute the vaccine has been the biggest logistical undertaking since World War II. Nearly 1.6 billion doses of vaccine have been given across the world. And now it is clear that the virus is waning where vaccination is widespread. In summary, we are experiencing a creative, interdisciplinary, and collaborative scientific ferment on a scale that has seldom been seen before. Scientists and their discoveries, which have so often been hidden in labs, are now daily headline news. As discoveries and innovation continue at an exciting pace, Everyone sees how scientists and healthcare professionals are collaborating to overcome a devastating pandemic with unprecedented speed. As we move past this crisis, I hope that a renewed appreciation for science remains as a lasting good to come from having endured adversity. Dr. Anthony Fauci, whom you have all seen in the news, commented on this unprecedented opportunity for discovery during one of our medical school town halls, saying, I only wish that I were 26 years old again. Against this backdrop, graduates, you are being thrust onto center stage. Long after the current pandemic has passed, society will continue to depend on you to address global challenges, some looming large before us and others that we can now only barely imagine. Graduates, you have an urgent call to answer, to advance science, medicine, and society, and to do so by keeping the human foremost in human biology. As society turns to science to address pressing challenges, I know that you will be there to lead the way. And I wish you all the very best in the future. As you step into the next chapter of your life's journey, it's up to you. 
future healthcare providers, lawyers, policymakers, researchers, authors, business leaders, world changers. It's up to you what happens next. You have already demonstrated your many gifts, capacity for really hard work in your studies at Stanford and in many endeavors in which you've been involved beyond the classroom. You have the multidisciplinary training to take on the intellectual challenges that life's going to throw at you. And each of you has incredible kindness and thoughtfulness, which are fundamental to changing the world for the better. On your path, wherever it may take you, remember that you will always have a home in the Humbio community. This is what makes the program in human biology so special. You all come from different backgrounds, have different interests, different knowledge bases and experiences. But together, we, your teachers, have seen that together, you are a group of collaborative, compassionate, and innovative individuals who support one another and lift each other up. As you move forward, know that you can always lean on this network, composed of you, our new graduates, students to come, and the thousands of incredible alumni out there. I am confident that, individually and together, you'll make a really positive difference in the world. So, on behalf of the program in human biology, I wish you all happiness, health, and success in your future endeavors. We are so proud of you, class of 2021. Congratulations. And thank you all for joining us today. Congrats on bio, class of 2021. Woo, we did it.